welcome, and thank you for your participation. Before we get started, we'd like to provide you a few helpful hints for making this a productive webinar for everyone. During the webinar, we would ask that you mute your phone or computer microphone. It has already been done for you. You can do this by clicking on the microphone symbol right of your name. If you have a concern or technical issue, please use the chat function or send an email to adeck at itea.org. To make the screen larger or smaller, use the plus or minus symbol at the top center of the screen. To make it full screen, use the diagonal double arrow. For questions for our presenter, you can submit a chat comment or email a deck at itea.org. Questions will be addressed in the order they are received during the presentation and the question and answer portion of the webinar following the presentation. Please note the drop down send to menu and select everyone so your question or comment is everyone is visible to everyone attending the webinar please note that there will be a slight break in the voice feed between each transition our presenter today is Dr. Douglas Lekorchek the 3rd He's the teaching assistant professor within the College of Education at North Carolina State University. Dr. Lekorczyk will tell you more about himself and his work during his presentation. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Douglas Lekorczyk. I'm going to facilitate this webinar, Engineering by Design and Industry Certification Pathway. So thanks for tuning in. A little bit about myself. I have five years' experience as a mechanical designer using the software package Pro Engineer, uh, known now as Free, for companies like L3 Communications, Westinghouse Air Brake, and Census Metering Systems. It's in the Northeast. And then, uh, for the for the past nine years, I've been in education here in the U.S. and in China, the center around engineering, drafting, design courses, um, some interesting pieces of work that I was able to, to be a part of with redesigning the course structure of a high school engineering academy and then starting an AIG enrichment after school program um, as a school district STEM specialist. Now, currently, I'm a teaching assistant professor at North Carolina State. My education consists of a, a doctorate in education, technology education from NC State, and a master's in business and a bachelor of science from Point Park University in Pittsburgh. So an overview of this uh, webinar, we're going to talk about industry credentials, both with CertiPort and SOLIDWORKS, uh, certification exam requirements, so what, what concepts will the students need to master for on where we're not um, becoming credentialized, certified, uh, but after a course restructure, they, they began to. And then uh, we'll look at the EBD course sequence. Nancy, would you please share your screen? Plans to, to better prepare students to be successful with their certification. Um, and then I'll give you some lesson plans. And we'll, I'll show you how to run a boot camp, a concentrated overview of these concepts students need to master. And then I'll give you three go to projects that you can use. Um, and these go to projects, you can make these about a week. Um, almost two weeks long, and uh, um, you, can, you can adapt those to whether you're using AutoCAD, Revit, or Inventor in your class. And we'll talk a little bit about SOLIDWORKS. I know that it's a, it's a pricey program, and, and a lot of times our school districts will, will choose to use AutoCAD or Autodesk products because of um, their free for education use. But we'll talk a little bit about SOLIDWORKS, and if you guys have any questions in the Q&A session, if you want to talk more about SOLIDWORKS, we can do that there. So we'll just jump in, industry credentials. So the CertiPort is going to um, give you the platform to take your credential uh, for Autodesk products, that's AutoCAD, Inventor, Revit, 
and then even outside the scope of this, um, you can now get uh, certified in Fusion 360. So that's their melding pot of a graphic design and the uh, engineering modeling package. Um, so the, the secure download form through Certiport that you'll download and, and test your students is console eight. I'll show you a screenshot here in a minute of that. Um, but before any student can sit down, uh, your your tech representative and your CTE representative will need to contact Certiport. You guys will need to apply to become a site testing center. And, and it's a really simple process. You'll contact Start Report, the regional director. They'll tell you, here, here are a few steps that you guys need to take. You take them, and then you become a, a testing center. Um, it's a pretty easy process. And then for those of you who um, may end up giving uh, a course or two, offering a course or two with SOLIDWORKS being the, the software package that you use, uh, we'll talk a little bit about how to become a certified SOLIDWORKS associate and, and the difference between a certified SOLIDWORKS associate and a certified SOLIDWORKS professional, the associate certification is student focused, whereas the professional should be a practicing um, professional in the industry. All right, so when you navigate to certiport.com, this is a screenshot of their homepage. And if you look in the top right, you'll see contact us and support. So if you hit contact us, You'll come over here to say, take the next steps, contact the sales team. And what this is going to do is put you in touch with your regional director. This is the person who's going to walk you through the steps to become a K-12 site license testing center. So, so when you say, hey, um, at the end of this course sequence or at the end of this school year, this is we want to certify these students. This is probably going to be uh, your next step to take. And then through CERTIPORT, um, the online delivery system, uh, the CERTIPORT provides a computerized exam delivery service. Uh, so this is console eight. And what you'll do is you'll have your tech, um, your tech facilitator at the school. Um, they'll, they'll actually contact or be contacted by um, the tech team with CERTIPORT to give them uh, some specific system requirements that you'll need. I think now that, that even, even minis, um, can hold everything that's inside the, the console eight system requirements. But, but your, your tech guy will, will talk that over with, um, with the tech team from CERTIPORT. So console eight is the computerized exam delivery system. You'll download and then uh, students will log into console eight with their CERTIPORT login, pick the credential exam that they, they want to attempt. And then as soon as, as, soon as the exam is finished, They'll get their score whether they, they've passed or failed and what areas they need to work on. Switching gears a little bit, if you um, if you want more information, this is what SOLIDWORKS looks like. SOLIDWORKS isn't hosted through their certification exam, is not hosted through a third party uh, like Autodesk is with CERTIPORT. So SOLIDWORKS is hosted through SOLIDWORKS.com. Um, here's a little bit of information here. Once you go to SOLIDWORKS certifications, uh, the catalog, to be able to apply for a voucher. Now, if you are, one thing I will say about this, if you are a school district um, who, who has a SOLIDWORKS seat license, part of your yearly renegotiation, you can ask for vouchers. So typically they're around $50 to say, take the certification exam. However, when you buy that site license for your school district or your school, however that's set up there, um, it's been my experience to, to just simply ask can we have 50, can we have 100 vouchers so our students don't have to pay that $50 per? And, and it's been my experience at the sales, sales team. They're fabulous, fantastic. Um, I've never had, had them tell, tell us, um, no, you can't have any vouchers or, or something like that. So, so if you get a voucher, you turn that into a credit, and then a credit will be applied to the student who takes the exam. So, Maybe something helpful to keep in mind. So let's look at some certification examination requirements. So our AutoCAD exam, here are some objectives, and these are adapted from CERTIPORT.com. The first uh, skill set that students will be required to, to master are basic drawing skills, selection sets, coordinate systems, your inputs, your shortcuts, and your inquiries. Um, th this is in no specific order. However, I will address the plotting issue at the, at the very end of this slide. Um, and give you a little tip about how to navigate through that. 
So we see the second bullet point, objects, lines and rectangles, circle and arcs, P-lines and polygons, so the drawing accuracy, snaps and grids, object tracking, modifications, we'll have our, this is our move, copy or rotate, scale, raise, trim and extend, offset mirror, grips, fillet, and chamfer. So we'll look at our drawing techniques. This is how can we edit some P-lines, how can we manipulate the hatching that we've assigned to objects, uh, some overall organization, object properties and layering. Uh, reusing established content. This is block editing for the most part. And then annotate. Can we put text in, dimensions in? Can we manipulate those? Uh, <clears throat> now, when we get to plotting, I, I, I would assume, um, in, in, in like we did in the school district that I was working closely with, uh, we, we did not have a plotter. Um, so uh, to, to train and to walk your, your students through these, these principles and, and these lessons, Let's let's just assume that we're going to plot, walk through the entire process like we're going to send it to a plotter, but then we, we can plot it to a PDF. And what this will allow us to do is is to change the print. So we look at the plot options, whether do we want to answer the A size, B size, C size, D size, um, what are, what's the viewing window, what size viewing window, can we scale it within that viewing window? So we can manipulate the setting, modify the settings as much as we want. And just we'll know that we're we're actually going to plot it to a PDF and not actually send it to a plotter. So, <clears throat> so this will, these, these are the concepts to master for the AutoCAD exam. And we'll jump into the Inventor exam objectives. So, uh, students should be able to to have a great command of the user interface. This is a navigation, the view cube, the environment, and the views, a basic and advanced modeling. So your sweep and drag fillets and chamfers, uh, patterns, rib shell, extrude cut, holes, and also um, hole patterning as well. So create a part features, revolve, um, and, and the work, whether we're going to, it, it, it's, a, it's always um, a good idea for students to understand that we can, we can push material, we can pull material, and to talk about how that, uh, whether it's symmetric, distance one, distance two, if we're going to revolve it around the center axis uh, to give them a, some different examples because in the in the exam the certification exam they'll have models that that they'll open and they'll be asked to modify these models and and a lot of times if a student is looking at a physical model that that has been modeled a little bit different than how they would have constructed that model it kind of stalls them out so so i think with creative part features the work uh, give them a few different examples about how to model um, a part differently. Right? We could use an extrude uh, direction one. We can make that symmetric. We can actually come in from the profile surface or the right view uh, to create this. Let's say it's a rectangle. We can do it from the top view or the horizontal view. So, um, yeah, it, it, the, the more experience that they have working with parts that other people have created or yourself, um, I think the, the the better that they, they'll be comfortable opening up a part that's already made and modifying that part. So then we'll jump into assembly models, constraints, create a parts in an assembly and drawings. We should be able to look at a center line, some styles, and then balloon collar for a bill of material. Sketching, look at the perimeter, dimension type, sharing, sketch constraints, and how to project geometry, and then editing. Can we reorder features, delete, and suppress and hide? Features and that's going to round out our inventor exam objectives. And we'll we'll jump into some lesson plans here a little later on in the presentation. So our Revit exam objectives are going to look at elements, grids from extend, how to reveal how to place components, uh, of features, modify walls, doors, windows, and door and window tags. In this family, this is all going to filter into our documentation of our door schedules and door windows, as you'll see at the bottom right of the screen. So our third bullet point, modeling. So roof and what are the roof properties, stair landings, uh, railings, floors, rooms, move copy, align mirror and array. So these are all manipulate. How, how can we modify and manipulate objects that we place? So our views, our scale, detail, visibility, cut plane levels, plan views, section views, elevation views, and then 3D views. And our documentation, what text are we putting in, dimensions, what uh, sheets and view placements that we'll need, and then our doors schedules and our windows schedules. Now, if we if we take a take a second and we think about our SolidWorks certification exam, there's there's two main um, 
main objectives within that SOLIDWORKS certification exam for, for the student. That's the associate. And that's going to be complex part modeling <clears throat> and complex assembly manipulation. And, and we can do, we can uh, lab that out more in the question and answer section. All right, so let's take a look at a uh, course structure and restructure that a school district had um, that were kind of struggling with getting certifications in the school year 14-15. So we see that in their in their course sequence, the software package that were, were used in drafting one, so year one for um, technology drafting students or AutoCAD. But that over that year, um, we see that it was split into three three focal points so architecture engineering and then civil year two uh, the software package was revit and that was the architecture fo focus and then year three inventor and that was back to an engineering focus and and even though the students had a well-rounded knowledge of architecture engineering and civil then a little bit more architecture and then a little bit more engineering uh, they weren't didn't have the the depth and the knowledge base to to get certified so uh, a restructure that took place. Um, I met with the team and, and decided to um, want to use AutoCAD as our software package for year one, Inventor for year two, and then as soon as we were successful in both of those, would we'll start on SolidWorks in year three. And so the 15-16 school year, we have some really uh, neat results as a result of this. Um, so, so some students struggle with SOLIDWORKS that first year just because they didn't have that engineering scaffold for year two and in year one. However, um, with the with the focus being for first year drafting students just on or first year technology engineering and drafting students focused on engineering and using AutoCAD as a software package, we saw that the, it was the school district's first um, industry credential certification was awarded to to these students, and, and it, it was a really neat thing to see. Um, and then by 16-17, we had uh, students who completed that, that first year. He's an AutoCAD focus on engineering coming into year number two. At the end of that year, they were getting certified an inventor. Um, and had a great command on the engineering uh, design process, which made going from a 2D program in, in AutoCAD. And that's okay if you use AutoCAD for 3D modeling as well. If you get into the 3D drafting part of AutoCAD, my recommendation is um, allow AutoCAD to, to host your 2D, and then um, it's, it's a very easy transition for students. Once they understand the 2D, um, and, and then they can navigate within the software package of AutoCAD, allow them to jump into Inventor for their 3D modeling. So in, draft, in year two, Inventor, we started to see um, some students in the 16, 17 get certified in Inventor. And, and a real major accomplishment was 17, 18, these students, after going through AutoCAD for a year, Inventor for a year, um, they were able to to use SolidWorks, which is an industry standard software, and then get certified, um, taking that CSWA uh, certification exam. So, so what ended up happening? The overall course restructure was they were they were, they were being pulled in a few different directions, and this may look similar to to the current course offerings or the current software application that, that you're targeting now or your school district is targeting now. So the steps to take would be to meet with your CTE director and, and get the okay for from that person and your building site uh, principal. Um, allow them, you, you take a snapshot of, of this screen, allow them to see that uh, whether the, the focus is on engineering or you may have a strong architecture background and that's fine too. Uh, you can have AutoCAD year one with a focus on architecture year two, with a focus on Revit. And then year three, um, I would recommend instead of doing a solid work certification exam or something like this, that year three could be um, a Revit, another Revit uh, certification exam, but from a, a, a different perspective. And so and we can get into that a little bit later, but there's a few different options, um, uh, Revit Civil, Revit Architecture, something like this. So. But but I I feel strongly about having it as a, a general engineering sort of mechanical engineering feel to it, and you'll you'll find that when you jump into Inventor and SolidWorks, that's really the 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 main the default application for those two programs. And so and overall in year one, this is so this is just what worked for for the school district that I was affiliated with. 
Um, this could be used as a template, but feel free to modify these numbers. But I recommend that year one students should be um, should receive about 20% of drafting content. This is whether we're looking at journal articles, books, um, examples, but 80% software application. It's and, and this is this is your course time, and so. Um, 50-minute class, obviously that would be 10 minutes um, each day would be drafting content, or you could break it down into that first day of the week, um, your content, and then your software application Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And that's how and that's how we structured it. Monday was content lecture, and then Tuesday through Friday, that was sitting down 50 minutes application based, and um, and then after after a couple weeks, you'll be able to see the students. It, it's almost um, it's just like watching them send a text message on their phone, isn't it? They, they, they know where the icons are, what they do, and how to navigate throughout the system. And that's really what we want um, year one students to understand, drafting content and have a great command on the software application. Because once they have that AutoCAD uh, uh, command and they can navigate through the software, when they jump into Inventor, it's, it's like riding a bike. They just get on and go. And, so, and that's really exciting to see that transition from a 2D package to a 3D package and uh, seamlessly, really. So, so if we look at year two, um, those numbers get massaged just a little bit more or less drafting content. And this should be a reinforcement and maybe expanded on a few principles uh, of drafting content. We should be a reinforcement of uh, the material that was covered in year one with 90% software application. And then when it, year three, and the reason why SOLIDWORKS is, is pretty neat with this structure right here is um, there, SOLIDWORKS can, can handle the, the platform of looking at laying out a drawing of building materials, opening that up in a spreadsheet. Um, it, it really takes the need to have a lecture or something like this um, out of it. And so by the time the student is in their third year, they're jumping on to, to SOLIDWORKS. I recommend that there's no drafting content lecture-wise, that everything can be housed within the software application. So, and, and especially if, if you are going to offer that SOLIDWORKS certification, um, I do recommend that, that there to be a lot more contact hours outside of the classroom that a student can use. And, and you'll negotiate that with the sales team. When you buy your uh, SOLIDWORKS certification like, or your SOLIDWORKS license, um, you can ask for some private in-home um, seats too, so a student could download that and use it at home. So, so IT is engineering by design course sequence for the three year. So this is a snapshot, and I'll go ahead and I'll. I'll uh, so these infograph infographics show the suggested course selection sequence to best prepare students for a successful temp and an industry certification through certif certiport for the Autodesk software packages of AutoCAD, Revit, and Inventor. Each individual EVD course should be taken for 36 weeks and follow the curriculum with specific attention to the software focus assigned for each course. Um, so, in a, so we're looking at the three-year course sequence. So we'll see in year one, which is the red callout, our students will take foundations of tech, followed by um, tech design in year two, which is a green, green callout. Now, both of these courses will have a focus on AutoCAD as shown by the purple callout. So towards the end of tech design, students will take the certification exam for AutoCAD. We see that in the yellow callout. In year three, which is blue, students will take one of three course options, advanced design, applications, advanced tech, applications, or engineering design. Advanced design applications will have a focus on Revit, purple callout, uh, throughout the entire curriculum, whereas advanced tech applications and engineering design will focus on inventor. Towards the end of advanced design applications, students will take the certification exam for Revit, Towards the end of advanced technological application and engineering design students will take a certification exam for inventor. So uh, if you know, if you know um, that in year three, you're going to offer a Revit certification. So in years one and two, um, start to reinforce architecture um, or civil applications. If you, if you know that, hey, we're going to look at inventor for year three, then, then you may may serve you well to get back here to follow this engineering um, this mechanical engineering focus for years one, two, and three. But however you 
however you plan that out, this, this would be the, the core sequence for tech foundations of tech and tech design. We're going to focus on AutoCAD throughout that. And then advanced design is going to jump into Revit and advanced tech application engineering design. Both of those are going to be in, inventor focused. Now, if you have a four year course sequence, it changes just a little bit. So foundations of tech and tech design are still going to focus on AutoCAD and then with tech design with the AutoCAD certification. How advanced design stays with Revit in year three. Um, but if we see advanced tech applications, instead of students taking an inventor certification at the end of that advanced tech, there is an advantage of having engineering design follow advanced tech applications. They both, both years will focus on um, inventor throughout the curriculum, but students should be, should have two years under their belt or two, two courses under their belt by the time they sit down and take their inventor certification, which, which I believe will, will um, sit well for the students. Now, in this four year sequence, though, you could do this foundations of tech and tech design. So your first two courses will end with the AutoCAD certification. Then if you jump over to advanced design for your Revit certification, and then engineering design for your inventor certification. So that, um, if, if you choose to do that, if you attempt to do that, what I would recommend would, would be to have um, a minimum of three hours contact time with the software package outside of your outside of your weekly class schedule. So whether that students can down and students can can download this software at home for free using their their school email. So um, for example, when when it's engineering design time um, in that in that fourth year, um, whatever your assignments are, you give them some kind of enrichment activity. And I'll go over a few of those examples that you can give at the end of this presentation. But to have students working on this about three hours of contact time with the software throughout the course. If, if they're going to stretch this out, there's a lot of certifications, a lot of material to cover. Um, but if with this out of the classroom contact hours and software, that's how students will be prepared to be successful at attempting that certification exam. So we see uh, these focuses on the class. So let's look and see how we can adapt some lesson plans to, to line up with the EBD curriculum. So if we're looking at AutoCAD Foundations of Tech, if you guys want to navigate to Unit 2, the Engineering Design Process, that is, this is within the Foundations of Tech curriculum. So you look at Learning Cycle 3, Big Idea is a Design Principle, and the objective is the Marshmallow Design Brief. That's a pretty neat, uh, pretty neat objective, isn't it? So we'll look at, this is how we can adapt it in class, and then I'll show you an enrichment and out of class context. So an adaptation in class, we could lay out each component with the AutoCAD, Sorry, allowed each component within AutoCAD using a variety of drawings and modification tools, dimension each component, and then modify text and dimensions per teacher instruction. And so this is how you, you would take an engineering by design, uh, the engineering design process for unit two, have contact hours, do your lecture run through run through the objectives, and then have that contact in class with the software. Now an enrichment out of class as the students create drawings and paper space for each component within AutoCAD, and then print a packet of A-size drawings to complete the design brief, and, and we can print those A-size as a PDF, um, clip the PDFs together and have a drawing packet there. And that can be done outside of class, and that would, that would add uh, for this unit about three contact hours outside of class. So if we look at tech design, so unit six, Let's navigate to Unit 6 in the Design Challenge. We'll see the learning cycle number four, Big Ideas, Design Limitations. The objective is the Lunar Plant Growth Chamber. So your in-class adaptation would look like this. You can lay out each component within AutoCAD. Um, you're using your drawing and your modification tools to mention each component, modify the text and the dimensions per the teacher instruction. And then you can also do the same as create your A-size package drawings as a PDF. Now the enrichment piece for out-of-class contact Structure adds additional constraints and limitations to their original design. So you look at their design, make some suggestions, some modifications, and then and then that student will need to go and, and update that, make revisions to their drawings. Um, and then assign layers to each component within AutoCAD. Color, line white, line type, and line weight. So now we'll jump into Inventor. This would be that, that second or the third course sequence. So advanced technological applications, 
if you guys want to take a look at Unit 5, the robotics, that's in learning cycle two. The big idea is elastic material modifiability. The objective is to investigate design failure. So how can we adapt this in our class and model each part and invent it? This is, the, this is a very basic, every unit um, has parts that can be modeled in Inventor and then increases the contact time in class, create an actuator assembly and perform a stress analysis to detect weakness. weakness. And then, and that's a good, anytime a stress analysis is performed in Inventor, it's a, it's a great, um, it's a great platform to have a discussion of why CAD packages save time, save money, save resources, and can make us more efficient 3D modelers. So we don't actually have to have uh, a chair and put uh, more and more weight on it to see when the leg is going to fail. We can model, run that stress analysis inside uh, inside a vendor, and we understand what material is going to work out for us. So, so in enrichment part out of class, we can modify material selection, perform stress analysis on different points of contact. So, for example, instead of front loading, uh, we can put the load, the weight bearing load, in the middle or in the back. And then calculate the actual model design failure compared to anticipated design failure. This is a good activity to have students write up what they think will happen, write up what they what has happened, and then a reflection piece. So, um, so some literacy assignment can can be um, embraced in this. And then in the engineering design unit two, if we look at elements of design, that's in learning cycle two. So it's robot construction was a big idea. The objective is the overall engineering design process. So model each part, create a detailed drawing, and then create the robot assembly. And enrichment out of class contact time, um, create assembly drawings, and then add some mechanical motions to the assembly. And, and the students will, will need to be able to modify mechanical assembly within their certification exam. So this out of class contact hour will, will support that. And then Revit, if we look at advanced design applications under Unit 1 construction, that's learning cycle one, the big idea of scales, measurement, and conversion. Objective is residential design. So we look at explore architecture scale features within Revit, modify scale settings, you know, explore measurements, and then design a model one room uh, with Revit. And we use standard measurement. And then enrichment out of class, design a model in additional room uh, with Revit, and then modify and scale an existing room. All right, so through design and modify, and that's our out of class enrichment activity. And these these out of classes, if we look back in these, so the enrichment out of class for the last few slides, this is what's this is what should allow you to get your contact hours that the student is actually using the software um, out, outside of class to to prepare them for for their exam. All right, so so an AutoCAD boot camp about a week before. Um, the week before students will take their certification exam in AutoCAD, this is how, is how you could structure um, your, your 50 minute class for each day. So Monday, uh, students will come in and you'll have lesson plans prepared. And, I, and I'll show you a half a dozen or so lesson plans that you can just screenshot and use uh, for this platform for both AutoCAD and then um, the next slides will be about a minute. But so for Monday, resizing and scaling on different axes. Uh, area grip adding snap values and offset Tuesday. You'll focus on patterns, layering, rotating, and then trim extend Wednesday, drawing shapes, uh, mirroring, inserting, and then the uh, perimeter Thursday, previewing the print layout, selecting geometry, your block scales, and then uh, counting geometry and changing line types on Friday, your P tools, your dynamic input, change in length, creating patterns, and then your fill in chamfer. So so when students come in, um, this is a uh, <laughs> maybe a cram session, I guess, for lack of a better word. But this boot camp really um, just re gives them a refresher of the ma material that they're going to to be asked to to show mastery of when they take their certification exam. And so here's a here's just a little um, a couple lessons that. Uh, but feel free to go ahead and take a snapshot of this, and and, and you can modify this to to what you need. So. A teacher script could be dis discuss what a rotation and base point are. I create a rectangle using absolute coordinates. Rotate the rectangle around, um, you know, two different points at at a negative 45 degree. And then you you what you could do is you could create what we've done here. We create an example that students can open up and see. Oh, this is the correct 
um, the way to do it, this is the incorrect way, and then this is where you start at. Um, and then and then how you'll measure success, uh, you'll come around, students will give you an answer, ask them to measure distance from different points or for um, the, the area within an object that they create. So that's one. And then this could be a mirrored object lesson. So begin by determining the middle point. You can draw a line, a visual, et cetera. So you can read, read through this. But uh, the problem to solve is students have an office with objects on the left side and want objects to match on the right side of the office. So how would you go ahead and do that? So if I have a couch, a table, a stand, a lamp, something like this, students will find the center of the room. They'll create that center point, and then they'll They'll select their mirror command or, or select the entities first and they hit the mirror command. Either way, whatever they're comfortable with, they'll use that center point that they created as their mirror line and then they'll place the objects on the other side of the house. So, and then one, one uh, way to measure this is always a good idea to, to ask for a distance between two points. So in, the, in the exam, uh, they'll input answers based on, they'll manipulate objects and then they'll put a distance, an area, uh, a perimeter. So we use the offset command to create a rectangle at a specified distance from a point. So the, the problem to solve is use the offset command to create an outline for a swimming pool at a specified distance from the corner of a house. And, and so students will open up a, a drawing file. You have a house um, drawn and marked point A is here, point B is here. So let's draw a swimming pool. 10 units up, 10 units. So we, we know that would be 10 units at 90 degrees. And if we want to move to the left, 10 units at uh, 180 degrees, that's your first point. So, so then students will construct this, uh, this pool, and then they'll take a, a measurement from point A from the house to point A from the, from the pool. And so that, that would be their answer there. So the input types. Um, so, so the teacher or yourself, you can sit down and, and have a lecture of input types, relative direction or coordinate, and then you could talk about your object snaps, uh, reference points, tangents, quadrants, and then the student's problem to solve would be you have arrived at a county lake, you're excited to start fishing, but you have entered the, on the wrong side of the lake, the dock's on the north side, how far across the lake is the docking area, you can measure your reference points, and, and when students who and this is a good this is a good lesson to, to talk about uh, linear dimension or line dimension and, and how to toggle back and forth between the two. So a path array arrays are groups of items in a specific arrangement. So students will need to create a, a path array of three rows and six columns of seats and and kind of set this up as it's a stadium and you're a singer and you're looking out into the crowd. And we have this stadium seating, but we want to be able to manipulate the, these path arrays. So we'll add more columns, we'll add more rows, we'll change the distance between the two, and then the, the second one in from the left and the third one in from the right in different, in different rows, we'll, we'll need to take a center-to-center -center measurement and align measurement from those two. And then, and then that's going to be the answer. All right, so this lesson plan would be about inserting and modifying slots. Um, so you could ask your students to, to go ahead just to make sure that the center is deselected and the tangent is selected and, and reselect center when you're finished. They have good drafting and modeling practice here. Um, and, and so you would ask your students to, uh, to first create slots and then, then um, to go and use a slot tool, either one, either way, um, and then to ask for the area. So, um, so anything that has, uh, a perimeter, obviously, we're going to have an area, and then those are going to be the two points of information that, that the student will actually enter in as an answer in the certification exam, so the perimeter and the area. Uh, let's change gears a little bit. Let's jump into the boot camp for inventors. So on a five on a five day week, we'll look at uh, Monday, build materials, um, measuring the loop and perimeter deleting features while leaving all other features, uh, measure mass in the center of gravity, uh, and then parameters and adding equations. Then Tuesday, add a draft to, to students, both positive and negative drafts. And that's, that's a little problematic sometimes during a lecture. Um, you know, we'll, we'll, need, we'll need negative draft if we're going to move, remove that part vertically. 
we'll need a, a positive draft if we're going to pull that, or a negative draft if we're going to remove that part at 90 degrees, a negative draft, uh, or a positive draft if we're going to move that at 270 degrees. And students sometimes kind of kind of bobble that up a little bit. I do too. All right. So change of material, using points to make holes, make different holes, select the edges, and then reordering features. Wednesday, we're jumping to adding variable radiuses, um, projecting geometry. Now, I, I will say about the projecting geometry, um, it's, it's, a, it's a good idea for students to, to keep an isometric view um, of their 3D model whenever they go to project that geometry. Because if not, if they do it normal to or perpendicular to the view that they're projecting the geometry, it, it's been very problematic for students to be able to see, well, if, if I'm going to, to cut that or if I'm going to project that geometry and make that an arc, an ellipse, or whatever the feature is going to be without seeing it in an isometric view, um, it, it becomes very confusing. It's like, why am I not on the front view then? If I'm, if I'm projecting it from this cutting plane, well, how, why is this not the front view? So, so just keep in mind, um, in projecting geometry, it's always good to go back to that ISO. Uh, so use an axis from the original subfolder, uh, sharing sketches and using shell on multiple faces. And so um, in, the, in the certification exam, we'll open up a 3D part and, and, and obviously I'm not telling you any of the questions or anything like this, but one area may, may include, um, so, so put a shell on everything but surface A, surface B, and then surface C, and then calculate the mass. So students will need to know how to deselect faces and also select faces to make a shell. So Thursday, know the names of the ribbons, drawing center lines, rib command, and then know and understand all constraints. Friday, we want to suppress, create new parts and existing assemblies, path to subfolders, and then sweep features. So let's look at some lesson plans for, for this. So this is a rip command. So the students can draw a circle, extrude the circle, and then shell it, place a shell within the circle and create a rib around that shell. And then it's always a good practice to assign. Go ahead and assign a material. Um, and then ask students what the mass of that project or part is going to be. In, in the mass or center of gravity are going to be the two points of information that, that um, the most likely enter in in their certification exam. So um, sure students are really comfortable getting into our properties and, uh, and looking at the mass, updating the mass. Remember, if we change the material, we need to go ahead and update that mass um, before we can go ahead and take, um, take an our property measurement. Okay, so extrude with a taper. You can give students a, um, some dimensions of a, of a part to create. Ask them to extrude it with a, with a draft or taper. And then right-click on the hole that you want to suppress if we're going to suppress elements in the view pan panel and, uh, and suppress it. And also, th this is, this is a, um, a really good lesson to have students look at the mask uh, and then suppress a feature, update the mask, and then look. And then we can see, hey, the feature is still there in the model tree. But it's suppressed. So it, in the model, it acts as if it was never there. But in our model tree, we can turn that back on, update the mask, and we'll see that the mask has changed and, uh, um, and that feature is visible now. All right, so we're looking at patterns. Um, we're going to need both polar and um, directional patterns. So, so this could be as simple as having a block with, with think of a pegboard, and let's go ahead and put some, um, put some spacing in between both the rows and the columns. But also on a, on a part, um, let's think of a uh, of a diamond. So instead of instead of going only 90 degrees and, and zero or 180, um, we'll need to establish those patterns going on a on a diagonal. And how we would do that once we're in the pattern tool, we'll select the um, uh, the edge selector, and then we'll select that edge that's on an angle, right? So so let's make sure that that students are able to go ahead and and select different edges to pattern off of. We're not just going you know, vertical or horizontal. Huh. And then a circular pattern and a chamfer. So problem solve uh, students will complete a rim so that it contains four mounting holes and four spokes. The cut out of the spoke will be chamfered. And then we'll look at the mass after we assign a steel property to it. All right. And a variable radius. Uh, since you'll be able to select points along a contour surface that, that has a current edge on it, 
and to be able to say, hey, I need this to be 0.25, I need at this location, and maybe a half inch at another location, and then calculate the mass. Right. And so a Revit boot camp would look like uh, Monday, grids and walls, Tuesday, floor and elements, and Wednesday, roof and layouts. Now, Thursday, Thursday and Friday, this would be an overview of the elements, families, and modeling, and Friday, an overview of the view and documentation. And then a boot camp for SOLIDWORKS. These are topics, not days. I'll go through this really quickly. Um, so, so one to topic number one, general um, mechanical engineering drafting knowledge, so everything that they've learned in these previous courses, section detailed broken views. Uh, topic two is view, view cube um, constraints and then shortcut keys. Uh, topic three, basic modeling and part files. Um, and, and that has to do with your, your sketching relationships, which, which are going to drive your modeling uh, feature relationships. Then um, advanced modeling, compound features, cut material, and then advanced sketching relationships. This is where we're going to see some um, uh, sweeps. So basic assembly, uh, how can we fully constrain an assembly, and then understanding the assembly features. And then advanced assembly is going to be our last topic. And that's degree of freedom, modification, rotation, and then advanced assembly relationships. All right, so at this time, let's look at um, three go-to projects. Go ahead, feel free to, to take a snapshot of these, um, adapt these to, to your curriculum, but students really have a, have a great time with this. And then the learning opportunity, opportunities um, are, are many when, when we get into these projects. So uh, the chess design project, Pretty basic. Um, each student will model upon a rook, a bishop, a knight, a queen, and a king. The base size and height are listed below on the table. Each student should be graded uh, for each piece they model. So add color material, common theme, and a complex and thoughtful design. And the chessboard ties into the overall theme. Um, so if, if we're looking at an inventor, so students will model each model one pawn, one rook, rook and bishop. The base height, the base size, and the height. It's all going to be the same. However, their material or their their overall theme should be unique to to themselves. Um, have one student who did um, baseball pennants as his uh, um, yeah as his theme, and then he used for his chessboard he used uh, a baseball stadium, and the infield was the chessboard. So he laid it out eight by eight. In the infield, but he made the stands and the outfield and, and some, you know, a little home run wall, some foul poles, stuff like this. Fabulous, fabulous design. And so, and that was all. And then we put the assembly together, um, put the put the parts in the, uh, you know, in the assembly, and it just looked fabulous. So that's a chess design project. Um, so so this is a mobile cart. So model each part shown in the ISO view. And students will actually make this. This is their video gaming mobile cart. Um, what I have students do is, do you see that the keyboard tray? I have them take that keyboard tray out, so they don't need to model that. But they do need to to measure what what it would be ergonomic ergonomical to them. So if they like to stand, they can make a standing desk, but they need to modify to to them so that that front shelf should be about where their belly button is. Um, or if they're sitting down and playing, some students will put an incline service so the desk actually comes out a little bit to them so they can sit back and, and play. So all measurements that need to be taken or, you know, to be ergonomical to the, their self. Um, so and they'll model each part. They'll go ahead and assemble it and assign um, each vertical piece. They assign a, a wood material, and then each horizontal piece is a glass material. So it has a realistic look to it since really get into that. And then the last one is a, a two-on-one. So students will also create um, a flyer, um, a, uh, an assembly of their parts, but in a, a little video of how it, how it actually works. But students can break into teams. They'll take two pieces, and you can randomly select pieces from your classroom. Or, um, or you can email me and I'll give you a material list of what I've used before and what other teachers in, in the district have used before that works out pretty well. But um, and they'll, they'll actually need to combine, modify, and then enhance the workability of both pieces that they combine. And so obviously when, when they're doing this, each piece is be, being modeled, um, whether it's AutoCAD Inventor or SolidWorks, and then they're revised and redesigned. 
Okay, Yasha, that, that is the end of me talking to you. All right, so I'll, I'll be able to field any questions that, that you might have. And um, okay, thank you for your time. Thank you for your attention during the presentation. The QA session is now open. If you have a question, please unmute your microphone and ask or type it in the chat box. Okay, first question I've got, um, what suggestions do you have for instructors with little to no software experience? Okay, so um, if an instructor has limited uh, software experience, the, the first thing to do would be to go onto YouTube to look at some step-by-step, um, -step. we call them clickables uh, in the district I was working closely with. So an instructor can go ahead and get a couple weeks ahead of the the material that the students will be presented with and follow some step-by-step -step, um, clickables or tutorials there to get to get familiar with it. I think that's always a good jumping point. The online resources are, are many. Um, they're free. And, and also, uh, one other thing, um, there's a few publishers, and I can, email, I can email you guys a list of these publishers if you'd like. They're very accommodating to in-class teachers. So you could, you could um, ask the author of some of these textbooks to, to send you a desk copy, and they'll send you a desk copy free of charge, and that'll give you some uh, a well-rounded background knowledge of the software and some tutorials to do before you start introducing students to that material. Are there any online resources you recommend? Yeah, well, for, for SOLIDWORKS, so if we're getting into SOLIDWORKS, um, they have a tutorial system, a built-in tutorial um, to the right of SOLIDWORKS. Whenever you boot up SOLIDWORKS, go to Learn, then select Tutorials. But but so so is it so on Autodesk.com? If you go into Autodesk and you look at their Design Academy, uh, there's some step-by-step -step tutorials with, with Autodesk as well. And that would be the first place to start. And then there's random instructors who, who post um, lessons. I know one really, really popular one is, I'm not sure of the name, but a quick Google search would, would populate. He designs, an inventor, he designs a, a Lego man. And it starts out with the hands and then the arm and then the feet and the legs and body. And, uh, and that's a really neat beginner, very introductory uh, level type of, type of design, and that's on YouTube. Do you recommend students retake the exam if they are not successful the first time? Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, so with SolidWorks, if a student does go to to retake, he'll have to wait, or that student will have to wait 30 calendar days before they can um, use another voucher, use another credit to to retake the exam. Um, Autodesk years previous, it was 24 hours, I believe now. It's it's either three days, three calendar days, or five calendar days before retake, and and I'm in fa personally I'm in favor of of a student if they score relatively close to the cutoff, um, if the cutoff is 600 and, and they come in at a, or if it's five five eighty six hundred and they come in at you know five forty somewhere like this, um, after a week maybe look at some more boot camp material prepare that student to be successful at the next attempt, I would I would be all for it, um, if if the the first attempt um, is a 100 or maybe a 150, and the cutoff to pass is 600, it's there's probably not that big of a jump in one week. Um, so so as a as a classroom instructor, if I'm making that decision, I would probably say and establish that um, when I hand out the syllabus to say if if you're success or unsuccessful in your first attempt, but you score over 400 or 450. Then, then 
a week goes by and we'll boot camp that material and then we'll retake it then. Okay, could you please review the process for getting students access to credential exams? Yep, okay, so um, through CertiPort, the, your CT director or your tech facilitator will need to um, contact the sales team uh, through CertiPort and their regional director will work with work with you to establish you as a testing site. So before you can administer um, Autodesk certification through CertiPort, you have to become a, a, a licensed testing site. And then, so once that happens, um, you, you'll do a couple training, sign a few documents, and then once you're a testing site, your tech will work with their tech department to get console eight uh, uploaded on each machine. Uh, and, so, and so that's a secure, um, platform, the secure testing platform that students will log in, they'll open up console eight, they'll use their CertiPort ID, they'll put in their, their student ID number, and then they'll go ahead and take, take the exam on that platform. What should you do if the class interest is split between engineering and architecture? Yeah, so, so that, that's a good question. If, if the class interest is split um, between engineering and architecture, I, I, it would probably be a safe bet to fall back on the, the comfort level of the instructor. If the instructor has a heavy architecture background, Revit would probably be um, the software to use, focus the assignments and adapt the lesson plans more towards a Revit uh, uh, architecture focus, and then have students take the architecture uh, um, certification exam through Revit at the end of the course. Uh, if, if, the, if the instructor is comfortable in both architecture and engineering uh, design, it, it's feasible. It's feasible to split the class um, half inventor, half uh, Revit um, and, and, and differentiate that instruction in, in, in some of the assignments, but it's almost like you would have two, two classes going on at the same time. Uh, however, this, th these would be either second or third year students, so, um, but that would probably defer back to the instructor's background and, and where they're most comfortable at. If the instructor, let's give an example to tie into to the first or second question that was asked, if the instructor has limited experience on both, both Revit and Inventor, I, my recommendation would be to pick one, probably Inventor, and, um, and to have the class go through as a unit with one software. Do students need to take the exams in order? We get into Inventor pretty early. Is it possible to take the Inventor exam without taking the AutoCAD exam? Yeah, there's no, um, it's not, so AutoCAD isn't a prereq to take the inventor exam. And actually with the course restructure, um, the first the first year that, that we implemented the restructure, uh, we had students who did not pass, that, that attempted and did not pass the AutoCAD certification, go through a, a year solely focused on inventor with engineering uh, focus, and they were successful at passing that certification in inventor. So, um, yeah, there's, there's no order, but I do, from my perspective, I do think that there is a logical flow of focusing on engineering for those three three years or a four-year focus, AutoCAD as a 2D application, and then Inventor as a 3D. Um, but but no, to answer the question, um, I've seen students not, not be able to pass the Auto, AutoCAD in that first year and then that second course, focus solely on engineering, and then, and then pass that certification exam. Are there any other questions for Dr. Lekorczyk? In a couple of days, you will receive an email with the link to the archived webinar 
and you can review that at your leisure for uh, any additional information. And you can also contact um, me, A D E C K, at I T E E A. Dot org if you have any other questions for Dr. Lekorczyk. Join us for our next webinar on September 25th at 6 p.m. with presenters Dr. Thomas Roberts and Dr. Laurel Hummel with the topic, The Top 10 Ways to Incorporate STEM in Your Elementary School. Have you been looking for innovative ways to integrate STEM in your elementary school? Have you wondered how to incorporate STEM on a budget with limited space and supplies? Join elementary STEM specialists, Drs. Laurel Hummer, Hummel and Thomas Roberts to discuss and share ways to incorporate STEM concepts and strategies in your elementary schools. This interactive elementary STEM council webinar will allow participants to generate ideas and populate living documents to use and share throughout the school year. We'd like to thank Dr. Lekorczyk for sharing such an engaging presentation. We also wish to thank the attendees of the webinar for your participation. Again, you will receive a follow-up email with the information for accessing this archived webinar. Good afternoon and goodbye.